which is one nice thing about this. So we got the back of the bottom. and I can cut it off here and then I can take this out feed and I can pull this out so I've got room to work on it and it's sort of straight right there so I'm going to cut it off right there and I'll use this as a guide to cut through it and it doesn't really matter how long these are but I'll cut this more or less in half play with them when I throw it back in the machine. And let's see if I can twist this one better than my liking. Sometimes I like to keep some of these. Some of these I like better than others. This one's sort of cute. If you twist it the wrong way you can you can sort of crush the, the thing and sort of pick it up so I can sort of feel if it's if it's going to be stable. This is a sort of ikebana kind of thing sir. They're made to look a little unstable I guess. So that one's okay. So I'll take this and I put it over here. The fun thing about these is you can do so many different things with them. So you can twist them in one plane and then you can twist them around like this. Now, wouldn't necessarily realize it, but the fact that that's ribbed and square keeps it from collapsing. These are round and if you try to twist them, they collapse. So this has a structural uh, integrity to it because of the ribs and the squareness. So you can actually do more things with this than you can do with the other. The problem with twisting them is, is sort of knowing, I don't know, it's tricky. You can't, you can't do it too, too intellectually. It doesn't seem to work. We'll call this one all right. I'm not sure I like it, so I'll put this over here. A neat thing. If you don't like one, you say, oh well, I don't like that, throw that back in the pug mount. Let's start to eat it up. And the one critical thing that makes this work, the clay that's being extruded has to be really stiff. This clay is too soft, the bottoms will crack. They won't bond well. Once you get it running out, it more or less stays straight. Cut it off this end first. Once I 
I get it off here, I can I can run it out a little bit. And the easiest thing is just to run off to this end. And this helps me make a square cut across the end, which is not as critical on this as a straight base. I don't know, these are all about different sizes. But I'm going to do is I'm going to set a bunch of these up. Because the cross section is not very big, you don't want them too tall or they won't be stable. This one in half. For some reason the shorter ones don't look as good. Okay. Here's an example of a real short one, which is sort of homely looking. Looks proportion is not as nice. Okay, so got this one now, we'll see what we can do with it. So this one is a little top heavy that way, so I run it forward a little. like you don't want the top hole to be too crooked looking, that looks sloppy. Well, the important thing is when you sit down on the plaster is to set it down firmly enough that it flattens the bottom, otherwise the liquid slip will run out. It's fun seeing people in the shop. Some people look at one of them and they hate it. They pick another one that's got a different twist and they like it. <laughs> I don't know what the difference is. Some people will definitely say, oh, this one's no good, but this one's great. All right. So I've got to keep a light in my mouth because I've got to shine it down the hole because the hole's dark and I can't see the bottom of the hole. You fill the syringe, this is a veterinary syringe, you fill it up and you, you basically just put a plop of the slip in the bottom and just as it covers the bottom you sort of stop. If you get it too thick it'll crack. If you let these dry too much before you put it in it'll crack. If the clay is too wet before you put it in, it'll crack. So, first thing I want to do is suck up the slip. And then I'm going to get the excess off. And then I'm going to get that out of my way so I can get my eyeball over the top 
and I can actually see the bottom and then I'm going to drop shelf in. And that's that one. That's that one. That one. Now I'm going to fill up again. Okay, now this is a pretty dry plaster bat, so 10 or 15 minutes I'll be able to pick those up. Couldn't live without my plaster.